Good evening. Hello in there. Sorry. Just, uh, I, I just wanted to ask if you were all right. Well, you were staring off into nothing. I just wanted to make sure everything was all right. I, I mean, as all right as we can be, that is. Yes, I know I'm not your servant anymore. But you're still my friend. Still going to look out for you. Well, it's been a harsh few days. Between the chases and hiding in stables and now sleeping out under the stars. You've started looking less yourself and more like... Well, with all due respect, you look the spitting image of your dad right now. God rest his soul. I... I don't mean to bring him up. You know, it's just... You've already seen so much death and betrayal, but you... You know he always had his way about him. Sort of wildness and defiance, no matter how bad things seemed. But always so incredibly kind. I think he'd be proud of you. You know. Of course I mean it. He always had a soft spot for wanderers and free spirits. I, he wouldn't have condoned the thievery of this crew, but I can imagine he would be quite taken with their spirit. Especially hers. Hello? I'm sorry. You just seem distracted. Or maybe lost in thought. Well, at least we can rest here for tonight. I haven't camped out on the ground like this since I was a lad with a small fire and everything. Were it not for the fact that we were being hunted like dogs, I would be on quite the adventure right now. You're staring at her again. What do you mean, what do I mean? You haven't taken your eyes off her since we dismounted. What do I think of her? <laughs> I don't know what to make of her. She seems dangerous, but at the same time, she's... I wish I knew why she was helping us. At any rate, she's obviously taking a liking to you, and you to her. Ow! All right, all right. Easy now. No hitting. You need to be nice to me. We're going to lay low with my family, after all. Oh, don't worry. Your crazy stepfather won't look for us there. He was never the type to ask about families or where we grew up. You and I will be safe as houses once, uh, Miss Scary and Intimidating over there drops us off in a few days. In all honesty, I wondered how you would acclimate to living with normal folk, but after this past week... You know, if you're so distracted by her, you should just go and talk to her. Yes, you. Go. I've only got a few more nights traveling with this company, so go and talk to her. Talk to her. Unless... Unless you are scared. <laughs> there he is. Go forth, oh brave one. Ow! Hey! No hitting. <laughs> Who's there? Oh, <laughs> it's you. You should be back by the fire, start getting ready for bed. You'll need it. The next few days are going to be quite trying. Me? Oh. I suppose I was just taking a moment to myself. Oh, no, that... <laughs> that wasn't a, uh... That wasn't a hint. You're more than welcome to stay. If you wish. <laughs> Far be it from me to dismiss anyone. You've as much right to the view as I have. It's beautiful, isn't it? The night sky. 
all the rich colors and shades. I'm glad it's a new moon. The darkness makes hiding much easier. And it's so much better to see the stars by. <laughs> My apologies, I suppose I'm just rambling. How are you faring, love? You seem to be adapting well to the road. <laughs> the muscle ache's finally gone. You're getting used to life on the run. Careful. You might fall for it at this rate. It's a dangerous lover, I should know. And it certainly comes with its pains and regrets. I saw you speaking with your man earlier. Is all well? Ah. Just settling plans. I see. He seems very fond of you. Oh, you grew up together. That makes sense. <laughs> it makes sense that he would be helping you in this way. That's all I mean. It's nice to see a noble and a commoner on such equal and amiable terms. You really have been nothing but a surprise these past few days. It's hard to believe you've never camped out before, never ran from armed guards, never had to hide out. I'm impressed. What? Oh, you think that's just all luck? All right, look. I don't know what you've been taught, but around here, we trust affirmations when we hear them. A compliment is something you give when you want to build someone up, not make them question themselves and tear themselves down. You don't have to degrade yourself for anyone. You've survived a harrowing few days, even by my standards. You deserve to be proud of yourself. Never doubt that. If you don't know what to say, then just accept it with grace. Let it go to your head, however, and I'll have Scarlet buck you at the next fork in the road we come to. <laughs> oh, bless your heart. Scarlet is fine. She's a big, tough girl. Honestly, I think she's enjoyed the hard riding these last few days. I've never met a horse that loved to show off like her. We're well matched in that way. Although I don't appreciate that she goes to you for attention and extra food now. You've stolen her favor from me. <laughs> oh. I'm only teasing, love. You seem to be more at ease, if I may say. Well, there's been precious little time to speak since, um, since we were met in the road. I'm afraid I've been a bit preoccupied keeping us all alive since. Yes, well, <clears throat> it's all fun and games until someone gets shot or trampled. That's happened a time or two, not very pleasant. Well, that's for me to worry about, though. All you need to think about is how, in a few days, this will all be over, and you'll be starting a new life, safe, out of harm's way. Are those worry lines I see on your forehead? It's hard to tell in the darkness. You don't know how you'll do in this new life? Well, <laughs> I wouldn't fret too much about that. But I understand. Starting over is an incredibly hard thing to do. It takes a lot of bravery. But you're not alone. You have your friend, and you've proven yourself to be a quick study. You can start by working with horses if you like. They have an uncanny liking for you, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Work your way from there. Is there anything in particular you want to do? Hmm. No. I could see that working out quite well for you. 
What's that? If I could start over? <laughs> God. Well, like I said, love, I'm well suited to this life, but, but if I could change, I suppose, I suppose I would go somewhere quiet, somewhere with a library. What kind of library? Oh, you want the specifics. Okay. Um, I would like to have access to all of Shakespeare, even his less popular works, and all of his contemporaries, and Tennyson, Wordsworth, um, Keats. I've got a good memory, but I can't just conjure all of their work at will. What? I told you before, I can read, and not just Bibles and maps, I... I suppose it seems quite unnecessary to you, but I have a fondness for stories and poetry. I just can't keep a lot of books on my person, they don't travel well, as I'm sure you can imagine. And there isn't much time to, as I'm sure you've observed. Words are important especially when you don't have much else in the way of status and money to speak for you. What? My favorite poem? Oh, I couldn't tell you even if you gave me all night. There's, uh... Mm. There's a sonnet by Keats that I always think of on nights like this when the stars are out and there's no one but us for miles around, but my favorite? No. <laughs> I keep poetry in my mind the same way I keep bandages in my traveling kit. Sometimes it's, it's the only thing that helps. The Keats one? Oh, Lord. Uh, let me see if I can even remember it in its entirety. Um, bright star. Would I were steadfast as thou art. Not in lone splendor hung aloft the night. And watching with eternal lids apart. Uh watching with eternal lids apart um like nature's patient sleepless eremite the moving waters at their priest-like task of pure ovulation round earth's human shores or gazing on the new soft fallen mask of snow upon the mountains and the moors no yet still steadfast, still unchangeable, pillowed upon my fair love's ripening breast, to feel forever its soft fall and swell, awake forever in a sweet unrest, still still to hear her tender taken breath, and so live ever or else swoon to death. Hm. I guess to really answer your question, if I could start over, I would do that. I would allow myself to stop and just Be still. Not like a hermit in some far-off place, like a sleepless eremite, as Keats calls it, but be still and just give to someone instead of always taking. But I'm afraid that's not in the cards for me. 
And that's the fundamental difference between you and I, love. You can change your life. I couldn't, even if I tried. Hmm. Anyways, I, uh... I'd appreciate if you didn't share most of that with the others. The, uh... Well, any of it, actually. <laughs> Thank you. It's not that I'm particularly ashamed of my scholarly interests, but we all know each other so well. When you travel with people day in and day out for months on end, it's important to have things or thoughts and ideas that are just yours. You start to lose yourself otherwise. Oh, we care for each other very deeply. We're family. I mean, in a few cases, quite literally, but mostly just bonded by common need and brotherhood. <laughs> yes. Well, my gender hardly excludes me from that. Moreover, we're a powerful team when we need to be. Little societal things like gender stop having so much meaning once you've fought together, run together, mourned together. You have a forward question? <laughs> by your standards or by mine? Of course, ask away. I enjoy chatting by starlight. <clears throat> oh, have I ever... <laughs> no, no. I don't have a lover in the ranks or anything like that. I'm not above indulging in companionship when we're stopped in town, but... Certainly not with my fellows. Not only would that be bad leadership, it would be a gross misuse of power. At the end of the day, it's my job to call the shots that keep us alive. I can't have anything else distracting me from that. I'm, I'm sure there are couples amongst us, but that's none of my business. <laughs> More power to them. Like I said, it's just not in the cards for me. What about you? Is there anyone missing you right now? No. Well, I didn't get that impression from what you said, but I'm still a bit surprised. They marry you ever stows quite young, as I remember, don't they? Hmm. Only the ones with money are social standing. Good point, good point. Well, there you are, then. Two souls that no one will miss under the night sky. How did Keats put it? Lone splendor hung aloft the night. The other part of the poem? <laughs> well, firstly, it's a sonnet, but... Oh... Awake forever in sweet unrest. Still, still to hear her tender, taken breath. Are you... Do you want... It's about bloody time. Flustered? No? Good. <sighs> Wait. Someone's coming. <clears throat> this had better be good. You spotted some riders coming along the road? How many? Huh. How far off are they? Hmm. It's unlikely they'll take an interest in us, but just in case. We'll keep an eye on them. I'll head down with some reinforcement, just in case. As for you. Go rest up, love. 
will get you to that new life soon. I promise. <laughs>